Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. Have I got a special show for you today, the 100th birthday of Dr. John Scharfenberg, and he is going to spend a little bit of it with you, giving a fabulous presentation on a subject he has studied, researched, taught for many, many years, and it's a favorite among a lot of people, maybe not so much in December, but next month for sure, how to lose weight, but how to lose weight forever. Please welcome him and in the chat, wish him a happy 100th birthday. Hi, Dr. Scharfenberg. What are the chances we both wore the same color on your birthday? Yes, this is unusual, isn't it? Without any planning. Uh, Dr. Scharfenberg, I am just such a fan of yours. I'm just so impressed with your, not just your life, but what you're doing now. It seems like you've been more popular in your 99th year than I mean, everybody seems to know who you are now. Millions of views on YouTube, being asked to speak all over the world. Did you ever think you'd be an overnight success at 100? Now, I wanted to start off by showing you we live close to Yosemite National Park in North Fork, California. It's the exact center of California, east, west, north, south, up the road from Fresno, up into the mountains. And we're just... A one hour away from Yosemite National Park, the southern entrance. And we wanted to show you what they used to have there is what they call the firefall, where they'd have a bunch of branches up at the top of the cliff, one side of the Yosemite Fall, and then they would bulldoze it at a certain time over the cliff and it comes down to the ground below. And they called it the firefall. And here behind me is the picture of the firefall. I, nice. I think it, it was a beautiful thing. I've seen it four or five times myself, the years when they used to do it. But that close to Yosemite is nice. Nice. Now, now nice. I want to talk about how to lose weight forever. So we'll get the first slide here. Right. Well, I'm curious, Dr. Scharfenberg, is this a topic that in your medical career you've seen any changes in how, uh, how what a person needs to do to lose weight? Because now, you know, these drugs like uh, Wagovi and Ozempic, this is what people are saying is the way to lose weight. Well, to start with, they never called overweight a disease. It took a long time to call it a disease so a doctor could get paid for seeing patients who are sick. <laughs> but for a long time, they couldn't. Okay. Now, the first slide, let's see, where is it here? Yeah, right now your screen isn't being shared, just so you know. Yeah. If you need me to do it, I can. I can How to it. lose weight forever. Right, it's just that we're not seeing your slides yet. You're not seeing the slide yet. No. Okay. <laughs> there, there it now it's started. Now we're seeing it, perfect. All right. Now, I'm going to start with a section on food. Let's see here. How do I move this thing? Why doesn't it move? Um, the, maybe the lower right of your keyboard, there's an arrow and that can advance the slide. It didn't though, is the problem. Let's see. Um, what about that button? Go all the way, a little bit to the left. You see, it's uh. Can you move it? I'm I'm seeing. Yeah, yeah. Go, go. Yeah, that one. What about that one right there? That looks like it might be advanced. Yeah, there, that's it. That's it. Perfect. Perfect. So, here's a kind of a summary of what I'm going to talk about. The first part, which is five major points on food, and I want to give you all five so you know what I want to talk about. The first is no snacks. Second is decrease your empty calories. That means sugar. Limit your oils. Use whole grains instead of refined grains. Limit saturated fats to 5 to 6% of the calories. Limit variety at any one meal. And two meal a day program should be considered here too. All right. Now, sugar, the ideal food. Is it almost an ideal food? It is. And it's cheap. It's clean, it's white, it's portable, it's imperishable, it's germ-free, it's completely soluble, it's altogether digestible, it requires no cooking, it leaves no residue, its only fault is its perfection. It is so pure that man cannot live on. 
So sugar looks good, but there's a real problem with it, okay? We should decrease our use of sugar. Soft drinks, fruit drinks is 33 to 40% of our intake. The other 60% is from bakery goods, like pies, cakes, sweet rolls, breakfast cereals, candy, canned fruits, jams, dairy, like ice cream. Scientists no longer promote juice as orange juice as it increases diabetes risk, while whole oranges decrease it, okay? Now, in our coins, it says, in God we trust. So we are a religious nation, started out as a religious nation. The original diet was fruit from the tree of life, as it will be in manure. Jesus is waiting to drink grape juice with us, so we cannot be too strong against all juices. Although the nutritionists say, don't use the juice, use the whole fruit. The Bible in Proverbs says honey used, used in proper amounts is proper to you. So that's some sugar. Okay. Now, let's look at sugar content of pies. I went to a, a notice a cookbook and noticed banana cream pie had 30 teaspoons of sugar in it. Berry pie, 48. Apple pie, 72. Lemon pie, 96 teaspoons of sugar. So there's a lot of sugar in the pies. Economically, sugar is the poorest buy for the dollar of all the good food groups with the fish and meat group the next poorest. Not because fish and meat don't have some good things in them, but it was very expensive for the amount of nutrition you got. Sugar is a part of what we call the obesogenic diet, helping you to get too fat. Sugar increases heart attacks, strokes, hypertension, diabetes, some cancers, arthritis, etc. It increases blood triglycerides or fats. It is a poor buy economically. It causes tooth decay, especially when taken between meals. It affects the hypothalamus, then parotid gland, uh, which controls the fluid movement of the teeth. So if you're eating between meals, it affects your brain, the hypothalamus, which affects the parotid gland where you get mumps, and the parotid gland actually controls the fluid movement in the teeth. And if you eat between meals, the fluid meat, uh, movement gets reversed, and you're more apt to get cavities. So if you aren't true to your teeth, they will be false to you, okay? Now, phagocytosis with sugar. Sugar in between meals decreases the white blood cells phagocytosis. The effect lasts about five hours. The American Heart Association recommends no more than 100 calories or six teaspoons for women every day and 150 calories, nine teaspoons for men per day. In other words, if you get too much sugar, you get more heart attacks, more strokes, more cardiovascular disease. So the Heart Association is interested in it, besides the dentist being interested in it. Now, sugar and fruits. <laughs> Nutritionists recommend using fruits, even though they contain sugar, since they are so useful in lowering cancer risk. But the conclusion of this matter is, that we should otherwise be using complex carbohydrates, such as starch with its associated fiber. <clears throat> now, I had a man go through my program, my heartbeat program, where we drew his blood, checked his cholesterol and triglyceride levels. His name was Fishbeck. He was a real, really great fellow. He was in Redlands. He had very high blood triglycerides and cholesterol. What was the cause? It took a lot of questioning to find the right question. Finally, I came to the right one. Do you like ice cream? Yes, he enjoyed nightly for six months a mixing bowl with at least three large scoops of ice cream with frozen strawberries that had added sugar whipped into them and with added whipped cream to which sugar had been whipped into it. So he's getting a lot of sugar, a lot of cholesterol, a lot of saturated fat, and his blood cholesterol and triglyceride went up. Now, he had been doing this for six months. 
Now I asked him how many scoops. He said, I don't really, uh, I didn't let my wife know. I'd match them up so my wife would know how many there were. But I said, you know, yes. He said, there were at least three. Anyhow, <clears throat> he was so excited about this and it took us a long time to get his triglycerides and his blood cholesterol down. But he had to get rid of that ice cream. Now, another thing, we should limit our oil use. Oil contains some fatty acids that are essential to life, such as linoleic acid, as in soybean and corn, and alpha linolenic acid, as in flaxseed and chia seed. Some fat is needed to absorb the fat-soluble vitamins and even the water-soluble carotenoids, which are coated with fat. Processing carotenoids with mechanical homogenization or heat may enhance the bioavailability from vegetables 18% to a six-fold increase. So there's mechanical things you do to get more of the uh, proper fatty acids absorbed right. Other reasons for fats in the diet. The long-chain omega-3 fatty acids, EPA, icosapentaenoic acid, and DHA are needed for infant brain, nerve, and retinal development. These supposedly would come only from fish. Gary Fraser's Loma Linda University studies of vegans show they had more of these in their fat depots than those in the general population. Where'd they come from? We don't know. We don't know. But they used to say they only came from fish, but we found that was not true. The water-soluble beta-carotene needs fat to be absorbed, and it is, it is usually surrounded with fat. So you need some, some fat to take care of that fat that's surrounding it. When reducing fat from 42% of the calories to 22% or from 20% to 10%. One third of the LDL particles switch to the small dense site, which increases the heart attack risk greatly. If you have too much of the small dense type, you have seven times the risk of a heart attack. If you have the large light buoyant type, you have only twice the risk of a heart attack. We should avoid deep fat fried foods as using the oil over many times. That may increase the risk of producing carcinogens. Most successful weight loss people were those who reduced fat intake. If using oils, get used to no more than two tablespoons a day. That's sufficient. But you don't have to use any tablespoons of oil. You can get it in foods that have the oil. It is known that the Bible uses oil as a symbol for the Holy Spirit. The Bible commands in making bread, the flour be mixed with oil. But this is not done. At least it should be brushed on top of the loaf of bread after being baked. In only 16 verses, oil is mentioned nine times in Leviticus 2. That tells you what the Bible was saying about oil. Whole grains. Use whole grains rather than refined grains. This provides more fiber which in itself helps to lower weight and that provides many other nutrients. Now, the Heart Association said we should limit our saturated fat to 5 to 6% of the calories. For practical purposes, that means a vegetarian diet. A study in the UK showed weight gain was less with the fewer animal products in the diet. According to a Swedish study of 5,000 healthy, middle-aged women, the vegetarians were half as likely to be overweight or obese. There are different types of vegetarians. Vegetarians, I like the Seventh-day Adventist group, they are vegetarians primarily for health reasons. Rather than just to be kind to animals, get much, they get much more fiber and vitamin C in their diet. In the Epic Oxford study in Europe, there were more people who were vegetarians just to be kind to animals. They didn't want to kill the animals. So when they wanted a piece of toast, they'd reach over and get a piece of white bread and stick it in the toaster. Whereas the Adventist group, they were doing it more for health. So they would get a piece of whole wheat bread and stick it in the toaster. So they got much more fiber and vitamin C in their diet. What is the optimum diet? The U.S. government in 2015 
stated the vegetarian diet was an optimum type of diet. This was a, upon the advice of scientists advising the agriculture and health departments of the government. Now, these scientists were not vegetarian, but the evidence was so strong, they advised that these departments to recommend to the U.S. population the vegetarian diet. If milk is used, it should be non-fat or no more than 1% fat, according to the American Heart Association. They said we should avoid butter. We, we didn't have to avoid cheese. One make, can make his own type of cheese. They can make it from cashews. They don't have to use dairy product. Meats are lacking in carbohydrate and fiber. Meats are also high in saturated fats and in cholesterol. Fish is not high in saturated fat, but could well be high in cholesterol. The body makes all the cholesterol that is needed, so there is no need to get any from animal products. Variety. We should limit our variety at any one meal to no more than three different dishes, but over a 10-day period, have a large variety of foods. But if you get too much at one meal, you're going to get too fat. The large variety of one meal leads to overeating. Kids eating out at restaurants where you they can choose what they want to eat, choose from a whole wide variety of foods, eat almost double the amount they eat when they're eating at home. The two meal a day program is excellent. This is called intermittent fasting. If a person has any trouble at all in losing weight, if he will go on the two meal a day program, he usually has no problem in losing. That program means skipping supper. It means eating nothing after 2 p.m. It is thought that skipping breakfast and only eating lunch and dinner at night will not have the same good of results. This not only helps with weight control, but with sleep apnea and also in keeping metabolic cycles going properly. You remember God had the ravens feed Elijah twice a day. And if you're eating only two meals a day, skipping the supper, there is no more time in the day than to have two meals a day. Now, the next section I want to talk about, which most people are not thinking about, is the behavioral change techniques. Obese are controlled by externals, whereas the normal person is controlled by internals. Now, what do we mean by that? The obese are controlled more by externals, while normal weight people are controlled more by internals. With studies where individuals were put in rooms where the clocks may be made to go one hour too fast or one hour too slow, it was demonstrated. When the clock said it was time to eat, when the time was not yet actually at that point, the obese wanted to eat. But those not obese knew from how their stomach felt, it was not yet time to eat. So what does that mean? There's about 400 things we do every day that we don't even think about. We need to chain, break the chain of events in doing what you don't want to do early to be successful. It is a little late when the Hershey bar is in front of you or your mouth to remember that you were not going to eat those anymore. You shouldn't have had any change in your pocket to put in the slot machine to get the Hershey bar in the first place. So break the chain of events leading to doing something you don't want to do. We make it very early in that chain of events. For example, you walk to work every day going past the donut shop. The donut calls out to you, I'm here. Come in and get me. You always do. You have to plan to walk to work another way not going by the donut shop. The working man comes home from all his heavy work and, re and relaxes in the soft sofa in front of the TV. It is right next to the kitchen. There are always peanuts available there and you have been used to eating them while watching TV. As soon as you sit down, the peanuts next door call out to you, reminding you that you always eat them while you watch TV. So you get up, and you go into the kitchen, and you get your peanuts. And so you have to sit in a different chair in a different part of the room to remind yourself that things are going to be different now. 
you have to develop a new set of friends. Then friends, those who you li who live like you want to live, those who eat like you want to eat. They'll develop friends who wish to exercise. We want to exercise daily. Exercise with, with them. They'll develop friends who don't snack, but who eat a good breakfast with little or no supper. They'll develop friends who spend little time with TV or computer games, but are physically active. You know, a person even sits at a different place in the dining room. At that table, it reminds him when he's sitting in a different place that things are going to be different now. He's going to eat differently. One must identify the cues that trigger your eating when you don't want to be eating. It takes about 28 days to develop a new habit. Since it takes about 20 minutes after starting the meal, before the brain can tell you that you've had enough, it may be best to eat things such as greens, green salads that are low in calories first at the meal. Make it a habit to eat only when sitting down at the table and nowhere else in the house. Use smaller dishware, plates, bowls, cups, and give the big ones to the goodwill. Most people like to see the plate full. That's okay if the plate is small. It was interesting that 85 nutrition experts had an ice cream social given, and they gave to people either a big bowl, 17 or 34 ounces, and either a two or three ounce ice cream scoop. They were allowed to serve themselves. They then filled out a questionnaire and the ice cream weighed. With a large bowl, they took 31% more and servings, uh, and servings increased by 14.5% with a larger serving spoon. So this test was important. This girl was a lady dietitian was leaving there. So they had this big ice cream social for her. And they did this experiment and found out right away that uh, found out right away that they needed to uh, control the size of their utensils. Now let's get to the next slide. Have no more than two to three dishes of foods at a single meal. With the more dishes, you eat too much. You don't have to eat all the soup in the bowl or everything on the plate. <laughs> they took people out to restaurants where they had the bowl set up so that they could put more soup in the bowl as they ate it. And they kept putting more and more soup in and everybody ate till the soup was all gone. And those that they kept putting more soup in, they ate twice as much of the soup. But you don't have to eat everything in the plate, everything on the bowl at one time. You don't have to. But we've been teaching that the poor people in China don't get enough to eat. But that doesn't help them just for you to slow down and eat. But you don't have to eat everything on your plate. Eat more slowly. Slow down in your eating. Take your hand off your fork between bites. It's not going to run away from you. If you are still eating too fast, try eating with chopsticks. If it's still too fa fast, try just one chopstick. Set goals. Break them down into small steps. You need to be responsible to someone, the doctor, director of the weight program, somebody, and report to him regularly. You need to weigh at each lecture, even though you may not be expected in this one day to be any less than pounds. You might have done something different that day that affects the scales. Group dynamic sessions are worthwhile, as those who verbalize what they're going to do usually will. Others who don't say anything don't change. Leftovers. Too much to eat, tittle, too little to save. That's what makes the housewife plump. Throw leftovers away or store it in an opaque container in the refrigerator. Here's a good model. Do less talking about weight reduction just keep your mouth closed. You got it? <laughs> the reward. With pounds lost, reward yourself. This must be a non-oral reward, not food. One who has success and gets a reward is more apt to stick to the program. 
Now, the stomachs are bad on math. They can't count calories. Have something on the plate to remind you how much you ate, such as the pits, some fruits, bones from the meat, peelings, etc. Memories are even worse. 12% of people couldn't even remember how many slices of bread they ate at the last meal, or if they ate any bread at all. So we need something on the plate left over so people realize how much you've eaten. Now, you have to learn how to say no thank you nicely. There's a delicate art of refusing food. You can say no, or you can say no thank you. Or you can say I'm on a diet. Or you can say I'm full. It was all good, but I couldn't eat another bite. Or you can leave a small portion on the plate. Then when asked to take a second helping, you can indicate you are unable to finish the first helping. Ask for a very small piece rather than total refer refusal. So there's some suggestions about how we uh, refuse eating the food. All right, now the next big section I want to talk about is exercise. Exercise is extremely important in weight control. There's advantages to it. For every hour you exercise, you will live three hours longer. An obese woman who exercises daily will outline, outlive a normal weight woman who doesn't exercise. A man who smokes, has hypertension, has high serum cholesterol, who exercises every day will outlive the man who doesn't have any of these problems but doesn't exercise. So back in the old days, people used to eat a lot of meat, a lot of things that weren't the best for them, but they didn't die particularly early because they exercise so much. But nowadays, our work is more inside. It's not uh, exercising like it used to be. Exercise reduces cardiovascular disease, cardiorespiratory disease. It reduces 13 types of cancers. It reduces diabetes. It reduces osteoporosis and fractures. It reduces Alzheimer's disease, particularly exercise in mid-age. It reduces obesity. It is the best preventive for hypertension. Exercise improves fitness. It lowers mortality more than by stopping smoking. Exercise is a better indicator of longevity than smoking, blood pressure, serum cholesterol, obesity, or any other measure. How much should you, the obese exercise? Ideally, the obese should exercise an hour each day. In Hawaii, all who walk two or more miles a day versus one or less at half the death rate. I'm not doing that. That's what I've been recommending, but I've got to get on to doing that. Spend an hour a day out there walking. Walk at least two miles a day. The speed you walk is more important than the duration. An estimation of how long an elderly man is going to live can be made by the speed he walks. <clears throat> Most studies show obesity does not appear to increase mortality very much when data is adjusted for cardiorespiratory fitness. Now, how do I know that? I had a friend, Stephen Blair. He was the senior author of the Surgeon General's Physical Activity Report. He's now 84 years of age. He is five foot four inches and weighs 195 pounds. He's big, he's round, he's short, but he runs four miles a day. His research shows about 50% of obese people were fit. He says there's a misdirected obese uh, obsession with weight and weight loss. The focus is all wrong. It's fitness that is the key. So exercise is extremely important, even more so than the weight. <clears throat> After a few week, weeks on a low-calorie diet, one stops losing weight and he plateaus. The answer to that is to increase the BMR by more exercise. A Russian study showed an exercise which uses all muscles is the best. For example, 
a person exercises with his legs only until his heart rate is reduced to a low fit level, but when switches to exercising only with his arm, so as he's rowing a boat, the resting heart rate returns to a higher level until he has done this for a long period again. So an exercise that is using all the muscles is the best. Now, I usually recommend that we exercise, uh, what shall I say, use useful exercise, gardening, rowing zone, useful exercise. Approximately half of adults age 50 or older engage in no leisure time activity. With two normal weight men, the active man has half the, half the risk of dying versus the inactive man. Sitting time increases the death rate. Those who use a pedometer tend to lose considerably more weight because they know every day they have to have so many thousands of steps. Okay? Building muscle with protein. There are a lot of these exercise specialists, coaches, that tell you to eat a lot of protein so you can build muscle. Don't attempt to build muscle with a high protein diet. At this may, as this may likely result in chronic kidney disease. One in seven in the U.S. today has chronic kidney disease, and 90% do not know it. This kidney death rate could be reduced to less than 34% of the current rate if people were on a lower protein diet, as is the vegetarian diet. Build muscle by exercise, not by diet. Excessive exercise may put you at the same mortality level as the inactive hand. How much is too much? Possibly walking more than 10 miles or more than uh, running more than five miles every day is too much. Exercise should be useful and judicious, not showing enzymes in your bloodstream revealing a breakdown of a muscle. Now, the next section is a whole lot of miscellaneous things, but also important points in weight control. Motivation. You have to have motivation to develop a lifestyle, to maintain a normal weight is extremely important. There are not two major ways to do this. One is spiritual aspect. Some people, because of their, uh, their religious viewpoint, knowing that God wants them to be healthy and good shape, and our temples are the body of the Lord, it's a temple of the Lord, we believe we should keep our body in good shape. The other is from the health standpoint. If you do a weight control program, not talking about weight, but just talking about better health, lower cardiovascular disease, or things like this, you can do as well as you do when you're talking about weight control. So there's two ways to motivate people to lose weight. Religion. Use your religion to advantage. The Bible says, God is interested in your health. 3 John 2. And also says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Philippians 4.13 says, Whether therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Even our eating and drinking have something to do with honoring God. Pray. Often people are unable to overcome bad habits without outside help, a power above them. With health, you may do it without talking about weight, but just do about prevention of disease, such as prevention of heart attacks or stroke. Show statins are not helpful in 93% of those taking them, but lifestyle does help. Or you can talk about weight directly. Now, fiber. One of the best ways to lose weight is to get adequate fiber in your diet. The fiber in the natural state is lowest in calories. Men <clears throat> must know when their wives go into the kitchen to cook. They add sugar, salt, and oil, which we usually don't need, and we call it cooking. Actually, we will find that the food God gave us originally is the best in its natural state as far as possible. We really don't need recipes. Make food your medicine, or medicine will become your food. Have you heard that statement? Stephen Jobs said that. <clears throat> the junk food diet. 
a junk food diet has been shown to cause animals uh, to become alcoholics and to produce opiates. Opiate blockers are now used in treat, treating some obese individuals who physiologically crave high sweet and fat foods because they produce opium, which it demands more of this junk food. If we give them an opiate blocker, that takes away their desire for those kind of foods. So this is kind of interesting, new idea. Drugs, there's dr drugs for insulin resistance. You see, diabetics, they get insulin resistant, type two diabetics get insulin resistant. So you gotta give them a medicine like the normal body produces, a semaglutide, which may get the pancreas to reduce more insulin. The medicine is expensive. This is known as Ozempic. It's advertised on TV quite a bit now. And when stop the issues is likely you will agree, regain again the weight you had lost. Many of the new drugs are expensive, so only the wealthy are using them. For example, Contrave, that's $609. Saxenda at $1,205. Imsevery at $19,000. Expensive medicine. How Ozempic works. This works by mimicking a naturally occurring hormone, a glucagon-like peptide receptor ag agonist. As these hormones rise, the molecules go to your brain, telling it you're full. It also slows digestion by increasing the time it takes for food to leave the body. It comes in a weekly injection or tablets that helps to lower blood sugar by helping the pancreas to make more insulin and promotes beta cell proliferation, but it's not yet approved by the FDA for weight loss. <coughs> now, here's a few extra items. There are some foods that are very good for you. Uh, avocado is high fat food, but it's very good. A study showed that non-LHDL cholesterol for those on the average US diet was about 151 milligrams versus 145 for the low fat diet or 142 for the medium fat diet. But 135 for the avocado diet with one avocado every day for five weeks. Is an avocado a day too much for you? Although the fat content of avocados makes them high in calories, a 2022 study published in the Journal of the American Heart Association observed that people who ate one avocado per day for six months maintained a stable body weight. That was a study came out January 22 in 2023. Avocado is a good food. I would recommend it highly because we've had good studies to show how good it works at lowering blood cholesterol level uh, better than cholesterol lowering diets. Now, another good food that we aren't eating enough of is the soybeans and soybean products. Soy lowers the LDL without likewise, without like other beans, lowering the HDL also. So soy actually raises the HDL. Some studies show a reduction in cardiovascular disease risk, and especially in stroke, by as much as 45% from use of foods high in flavonoids, such as soy, with their isoflavones. Women in Japan consuming tofu four times a week compared to those who only had two times had a heart attack risk ratio of only half as much. So getting adequate amount is good. We are not eating enough soy in this country. Soy reduces blood pressure, especially in women, at 25 grams per day or more versus less than two and a half grams. Studies have found blood pressure lowering effects of soy foods, as well as improvements in endothelial function, reduced LDL cholesterol oxidation, and larger LDL particle size associated with reduced coronary heart disease risk. So soy is really worthwhile. Soy's, studies show soy products and isoflavones 
may reduce the risk of prostate cancer. Uh, the Adventist Health Study showed those drinking more than one cup of soy milk a day had a 70% reduction in prostate cancer risk. Studies show soy may have protective effects against breast cancer and reduce risk of death or recurrence in those who have had it. A study showed ovary cancer to be inversely related with 82 grams versus less than 20 grams per day, resulting in a 60% lower risk. A case control study showed that the use of beans such as soybean were protective against pancreatic cancer. So soy is something I can recommend. In the US we're eating maybe one gram a week, whereas uh, total vegetarians might get uh, six to 12 grams a week. In China, 20 grams a week. In, in uh, Korea or Japan, maybe 30 grams a, a week. We need more soy in our diet to make it worthwhile. A little bit hasn't shown to do all those good things we see, but a great amount does do those things. Now, soft drinks. Sugar sweetened beverages promote weight gain and replacement of energy from fat by sugar sweetened beverages is counterproductive and that's aimed at weight loss. So this is why we're talking about beverages. Beverage panel says don't use it. Water is the thing we should have between meals. Not at meals, but between meals. More energy can be ingested per minute when apple juice is consumed than when apples are eaten. Energy containing soft drinks can supply large amounts of energy despite their relatively low energy density. Okay. Over the past several decades, levels of overweight and obesity have increased across all population groups in the U.S. Concurrently, an increased daily intake of 150 to 300 calories for different age sex groups has occurred, with approximately 50% of the increased calories com coming from consumption of calorically sweetened beverages. Kids 7 to 17 consume nearly twice as many calories when they eat at restaurants. Average 760 by more than at home, average of 425. Such meals, besides resulting in obesity, provide more saturated fat. And an important nutritional principle, which I mentioned before, is to ensure getting adequate nutrition is to consume a variety of different foods over a period of time, but not at one meal. There should not be a great variety of any one at any one meal, but this encourages overeating. Thirty-nine studies revealed, reviewed show consumption of food increases when there is more variety in a meal, and this is associated with greater body weight and fat. How about the low carbohydrate diet? A review of studies show no metabolic advantage for the low carbohydrate diet. The low-carb diets produced greater weight loss the first six months, but by the end of one year, there was no difference. Problems? Aggravation of kidney disease, which is the nurse's health study showed one quarter had, and an increase in heart disease. Weight loss from high-protein diets occurs primarily because one consumes less calories. A major reason for weight loss was because of increased water loss in these high protein diets. Well, so much for that. That gives you a quick overview 